And we're live. Welcome to episode 185 of Dunn and Drew, the second in person, in studio recording. Buns. We are back from Cleveland, Ohio. Woo! What a trip! Um, what a trip! Thanks for coming. Yes, I was gonna say, <laughs> thank God I came. A trip of a lifetime. It was. I know we we're talking about we we're ranking our trips the other the other week in the group chat. This has to be in my top five. Like to see three. Might be top three. To see Trevor, and we'll get into everything, but to see Trevor Lawrence get drafted, to see all the access to free alcohol we had. Um, and the Screams done and drew. It's just the combination of everything. The weather could have been better. Yes. Um, but the, it was a, a hotel. You know I love hotels. I was in a hotel bed that I'm filled with cum, both of them. <laughs> I was, was going to bring up the cum later. <laughs> All right, well, that's a little tease. Um, but I was on the pull-out couch because Eric snores, and I know if I slept with him on the king bed. Did I snore at all? Yeah. I did? But I was so out that I felt I slept, like, right through it. I woke up to, like, you know, move around or whatever I woke up for, get a sip of water because my tongue was dry as hell. Yeah. Um, but I went right back to sleep because I was just gone. Um, but I was able to, yeah, I was able to sleep on this pull-out couch with the mattress. You could literally feel every single spring, but Jesus, <laughs> it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Because yeah, you, you didn't mind sleeping on that thing. Where's my drink? Oh. Jesus, that's what he's thinking about right now, uh, this drink. Where's my drink at? <sighs> what are you sipping on right now? This is a Jack and Coke in a Jameson Jaguars cup. <laughs> you guys, you guys think we would be tired of drinking, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> For real, after that trip, when I was on my way home on that flight, I was like, "That's it. I am going to go until the Dun and Drew retreat without drinking. I can't. I can't do it." But I drank night two. When you left, you were like, "Gonna miss Cleveland, but not gonna miss you." I, I like, said that? Yeah. Damn. I, was like, Damn. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. I'm not going to miss you. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I would not say that. You said that. I'm not going to miss you. It's Damn. not on camera. I wasn't recording, but you said it. I missed the hell out of you for two days. It was uh, a day. You said it in the hotel before I probably you got t- taken to the airport. You're like, going to miss Cleveland. Not gonna miss- I think How about like- it was the other way around? I'm going to miss you. I'm not going to miss Cleveland. Because I joked no. about coming home. You were falling in love with the city, low Damn, key. Damn, low-key. Very low-key. Don't say that out loud. But Cleveland is your city? Why you MGK? Why I'm LeBron. Oh, MGK. Yeah, he's from there. <laughs> oh, that's the guy you picked? <laughs> it's because everyone kept talking about MGK while I was in Cleveland. Because I guess he was there for the draft. And everyone was like, oh, he yeah, was. MGK is from Cleveland. So that's why I said it. You white. Um, how, how was your trip? Oh, my fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had no expectations. I didn't really know what right? was going to I didn't really I didn't know what was going to happen. I had no itinerary. Everything that I did happened. Just happened. And everything happened amazingly. It went perfect. Why you, why you Trump? <laughs> amazingly. <laughs> perfect. We do well in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> Always do well in Cleveland. Every time we go. Love the people here. Ohio. Love Ohio. Red state. <laughs> I can't do it's it. blue anymore. now. Gotta be red. Gotta turn I need red. Obama back. Only president I can do. Uh, love Ohio. Uh, <laughs> change. Uh, but anyway, yeah. I had a good time. Good ass time. Lots of fucking stories to tell from the trip. Oh my God. Like, I don't know how long this podcast is going to be, but... Like I, God I, damn, we have stories to tell. Like I, I dumped all the vlog footage into my timeline and the editing software, but I haven't looked at it. But I got a good sense of what happened, and I wrote notes from like every little, every little instance that we got into from time period in the day. I tried to write something down because there was an event in every little thing that we did. Like something funny happened everywhere we went, and it started before we even left. It started with my flight. With me telling yes, you that. Exactly. That's the first thing I have in here is your fucking I'll, flight. I'll see you in Cleveland after I go from Jacksonville to Miami. Miami to New York. and New York to Cleveland, you roasted me. Yeah. That was in the last vlog, so you guys know about that. Andy booked a trash itinerary at first to go. And he didn't even tell me. He didn't I was going to see you in Cleveland. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even tell me till like, what, the day before? Two days before? Uh, something like that. And I was like, bro, because he was going to get in at 3 p.m., which was fine. We didn't really do anything anyway. We but I'm glad I didn't do that because when we did get in and I took your flight, I took a good two-hour nap. So if I didn't exactly. have that nap, I don't know if I would have taken advantage of the 12-hour open <laughs> bar. 
exactly. When we flew in, we went to right to the hotel, and we, I think you went to the, you took a nap. I went to the gym, and then that's when the festivities start. Festivities start, and he probably would have been delayed because the weather was shitty in Cleveland and raining. And I, what just, are the odds that three flights all are on time? I don't know, especially to Miami and New York City. Was it LaGuardia or yeah. LaGuardia? It's a better. How do you know your city? I try. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I was like, Ed, you got to change that. You got to change, get on my flight. He only booked that because it was free with miles. And he changed it. I was like, I, I texted you a list of pros and cons of each you flight. Did. I was like, here are the pros of keeping your flight. Here are the cons. Here are the pros of changing. Here are the cons of changing. And the pros outweighed the cons for changing. He's like, you don't have to pay that 200 bucks and get in when I get in. And he did. And he was still a little uh, grumpy when he landed. But you know, Andy, Andy just need to get some food in him. You got to take a nap. Then he's good for until three a.m. Yeah, you know, which is where we was when we went. For me, like the night before we flew out, we were up a long time because we had we had the podcast the night before. I was editing the oh vlog. Oh my god! And we had to pack. I had to shower. I didn't get to bed till three a.m. No wait. No, that's when we woke up. Yeah, we woke up at three a.m. I went to bed at like one thirty. Fuck. I think. So I got two hours of sleep the night before the first round of the draft. And you didn't take a nap. And I didn't take a nap because I wasn't tired. I couldn't sleep when we first got to the hotel because we'll get to that later. But it's, it just was not very inviting at first. But I was out in the... So I was like, yeah, I am not taking a nap right now. I'm going to the gym. Took a lift to the gym and shit. We'll get to the timeline later. We're just setting y'all up right now. But Oh, I thought we are on the timeline. Oh, no, I got, I got. You got more. <laughs> yeah, I do. But the the draft was. Um, but I was saying, like, I got two hours of sleep the first night of the draft. Twelve hour open bar, all the shit we did that first night. I was on two hours of sleep. By the time we got back to the hotel the first night, we were just laughing at everything, and then we knocked. <laughs> <laughs> we- <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, do you want to do you want to talk about the draft picks? Just, just our instant reaction to all the picks, or do you want to go down the timeline now of events? Do you um, want to do Manscaped that so we don't forget it? Yeah, let's do Manscaped that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we, get, we get too into the pod. We're like, who's our sponsor? Uh, Dunn and Drew, before we get into the draft, you know, we brought to you by Manscaped. And if you guys have a bush down there... What? Sorry. I didn't prepare the ad. <laughs> Wait, didn't he give us more speaking points? He, he gave them for May, so I had to go. It's for, May? For May 6th. I, I think it'll still work. No, no it said don't oh. don't promote the new shit until oh. May 6th. Oh, so new I, product. So I'm looking for the, the new shit. Hold on, let me redo it. All right. Do, 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 do. Dun and Drew is brought to you by Manscaped. Do you guys have a bush down under your pants? You definitely do if you have not tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. After using these life-changing products, you're going to want to join a ball sack beauty contest. I'm in it all the time. Just check out my OnlyFans. And I'm looking out for you, too, because we have an exclusive 20% off discount if you use the code DUNNANDREW at manscaped.com. Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game with their perfect package 3.0 kit. It comes with the essential lawnmower 3.0, and you know they might be upgrading that sometime soon, so stay tuned for that announcement. But you know they got the lawnmower 3.0, they have the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, which is a spray on toner that just goes right on your balls like throughout the day. They have the cologne. But you can just add that. That doesn't come in the perfect package. You point out, you can add that. That's Andy's favorite cologne ever. Um, And I know cologne. And when you purchase the perfect package or performance package, you get two gifts, two free gifts. You get a shed travel bag and the patented high performance reducing chafing manscaped boxers. But my favorite products so far have been the ball deodorant cream. I always take that. Put it on my balls after I shower, and the nose hair trimmer. Did you see me spraying my balls in the? I did. I saw you on your back and going. I was about to ask you what that was, but I knew. Come on, I just knew. You know, I was like, if you know, you know. I said that's a crop revive. (laughs) 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 
If you want these products, you want your balls smelling fresh, you can walk around the NFL draft all day. Then go to manscaped.com and use the code Dun and Drew for 20% off and free shipping. And stay tuned next podcast for an announcement of a brand new product. A little teaser there. All right, before we get into the timeline of events in Cleveland, I want to talk about how we even got down to the stage because that's that's very important to set up because it, it wasn't supposed to happen. So before I was... Yeah, it almost didn't happen. Before Andy was coming to the draft, I was going to go by myself and I had a ticket to go to the vaccinated standing room only section by the stage and I was going to go. I had a ticket for it. Vaccinated fans... Um, that's pretty much it. That was the only criteria. And, uh, you, and you had to have, like, it was, like, exclusive as fuck. You had to get invited to it or have access to it. Like, you couldn't go and buy these tickets. They had packages you could buy, but it was for, like, seats in the actual stage area. But these standing room ones, I don't, ha- I don't have any idea how people can get them. But one of my followers who works for the Cavs, uh, I guess the teams in Cleveland work with each other. So the Browns, he got access to the Shout tickets. out to Cole. Yeah, shout out to Cole. Um, you'll see him in the vlog. He's in like some of the content we've posted already. LinkedIn, I posted him on LinkedIn. He's on my story as well while we were there. So you've probably seen him, but paid no mention. But shout out Cole. You'll see him in the vlog that we dropped. So he got me my ticket. And then Andy was like, okay, I'm going. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I got a, I got a ticket to the stage, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. We'll just go to the Jags draft party and we'll watch Trevor Lawrence inside and then fast forward another person that follows me said hey i got a ticket to the vaccinated standing section if you want it so i put us all in a twitter group chat and i was like yo these are all the guys that are trying to go down there let's see what we can make if we can make it happen and then the second guy that reached out to me backed out and said oh my friend didn't know that he got the wrong ticket or whatever and that fell through so I was like, all right, we don't have tickets to the draft. We're just going to go to this Jags draft party. Like two days before or a day before. If you don't have tickets, though, to the the VAC section, you can stand further back. You just have a shitty view. Yeah. It's, and it's, you're not, you know, you don't pretty, get the experience of fuck mass where, you know, you're standing real close to you. That It's like post-pandemic. That's what it felt like in there. It was a beautiful thing. If you're vaxxed, it, you're being safe. Ma- you always stress no mask. <laughs> but it, it was it was a, a no. I only stress it if like you're you're vaxxed and the person next to you is vaxxed. Then fuck all. Like just people had their masks down. I was like, yes, these are these back. are my people. <laughs> we're back. And the beginning of the NFL draft did a little five, four, three, two, one, and then everyone cheered and it said we're back on the screen. I was like, I got goosebumps. Everyone booed Roger Goodell. Even more goosebumps. So sick. Anyway. We, we did uh, sneak somebody in that was unback, so we could have started a new pandemic in Cleveland, but you'll see that in the vlog. Um, he, we did not sneak him in. He snuck himself, <laughs> he snuck himself in. in. He, was he was a savage. He was in our party. Um, but anyway, the, the original guy, Cole, who got me the ticket, reached out to me, and I was like, well, I reached out to him before the draft. I was like, hey, if anything changes, let me know if uh, like we can get Andy in. And he messaged me. He said, yo, I got an extra ticket. Don't remember how he got it, but we got it. And I was like, fuck. This is like, this is perfect. Everything's, that's why I said at the beginning of this show, everything just worked out perfectly. I had no plan. Everything just, I just went with the flow and shit just worked out. Sometimes that's just how you got to, you got to roll with the punches. So we both got tickets and we knew about them before we flew out there. Uh, the only thing was we had to like coordinate with Cole in Cleveland, downtown Cleveland, because Andy's ticket was already on his phone and they were non-transferable because of the little barcode scan or whatever that they have. So we had to work out those logistics while tanked and cold and shit. So that's how we got those tickets. Now we will get into actually getting to Cleveland and starting our trip. And it starts off with us landing in Cleveland and we're waiting for our lift to the hotel and like these emergency vehicles pull up, like oh, yeah. three or four emergency vehicles, I guess Andy knew that someone no when i was inside the airport i heard um a, a lady no i didn't i heard <laughs> do, 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 what do we do a lady just fell down the escalator so i my nosy ass was walking to the bathroom i was like 
let me see. But I didn't see her at the bottom. I was expecting to see her like this, all starfish. Jesus. At the bottom. <laughs> Bloodied. Wanted the scoop, but uh, no, I didn't see anything. But we were out there waiting for our Uber. Three ambulances pull up, take a stretcher out, end up stretching her out. But uh, when we get into the Uber, is this the guy? Oh, yeah. the Uber driver. Yeah. Unbelievable Uber driver. But he's also one of those people that apologize way too much. Very foreign. I knew when I saw his name, and then he called me, asking me like where I was standing. I was like, check your map. Usually they just check your map and know, but I guess the foreign drivers, they like clarification, so they call your ass. Don't call me. I'm going to say his name on the pod, because y'all will be yeah, like, it's just, you won't know him. You won't know him, but I want them to... Unless you're in Cleveland. I want I them to know that they would have stereotyped him as well. Ahmad. His name was Ahmad. We got in his car. <laughs> you got in his car. Like He's got the taxi screen up in his in his lift. And the address of the hotel is in the maps. Sometimes the lift maps, they don't work. They like take you different directions and shit. But they eventually get you to your destination. So he asked me, where are you going? You going to Cleveland? I was like, yeah. Because when I'm there, like, I'm thinking everything is Cleveland, but obviously, like, there's these little subsection cities around the area, and then Cleveland is Cleveland, I guess. But I th- I'm thinking, like, everything's Cleveland, so I was like, yeah, we're going to Cleveland. Aren't we in Cleveland? The fuck? But our hotel was in Independence, which is a city 15 minutes south. Which is a city independent of from Cleveland. Cleveland. So I told me we were going to Cleveland, but we we're going to Independence, and the map gave two different routes to the hotel. So he took the one... That was going more towards downtown Cleveland. So when I told him that we were actually going to Independence, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's, it's my fault. Oh, can we do that? Can oh, do sorry. The voice? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. That's how he was doing that's it's how like, it. Is that the Chinese thing like that's, we do? No. Is well, it the that's, that's how you talk. What are you, what am I, I, don't I don't know these days. days. <laughs> these days. He did talk like that. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. He was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's all my fault. Uh, you can punish me for... He said... <laughs> he, said <laughs> he said, you can punish me. I was like, relax. We're, we're still on the route to the hotel. <laughs> that, <laughs> I'll just, punish you when we get out. We're just going a different way. It's, Is that just, when you took the camera out to start recording? <laughs> when you're like, oh shit, this man, this man's kind of wild. I don't think I recorded him saying you can punish me. I was... No, but my, you took the camera out after he said that. You're like, oh shit, he might say some more shit. That's kind of weird. I did take the camera out in the lift because Andy told me to. He said, you, so you, punish can, it. you can punish me. But yeah, I was like, it was raining. He was a terrible driver. And, but we eventually got to the hotel, duh. And like when we got out of the car, he fucking looked at his map and, and got out and pulled out his wallet. He's like, what did, what does your fare say? And I said, it says $27. And he and he gave me a ten dollar bill. He says he said so sorry. Don't don't punish me for this. <laughs> I'm like bro, we here. Well, he Safe apologized road. like ten times so, on the road. So He's much. like it's so my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. It's not your fault at all. It's my fault. It's very sweet man. I, I was like I literally told you the wrong city, bro. Why are you taking blame for the for the wrong route? It was my fault. He just <laughs> want to keep his five star. Did he have five stars? I don't remember. I could check. Maybe he was on the fringe, but he didn't want to hit. Yeah, he was like, please don't punish me. Don't punish me. I'm like, bro, Lyft ain't that serious. <laughs> you still going to get rides. Uh, yeah, you're working during the NFL draft. People can call Lyft. Not 2 a.m., though. We'll get to that later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave me a $10 bill, and I used that for a tip at one of the bars. So thank you, Ahmad, for getting us there safely. I wanted to give him three stars because I thought I was going to die. But we made it safely. But... We get to the hotel, room wasn't available, we take a ground floor room that was available, we get in, the bed smells like... The whole room smelled the, musty. <laughs> <laughs> the whole room smelled damp and musty, and the bed apparently and I smelled. was so nervous, like when we walked in that hotel room, that I was going to get sick. Sick, yeah, yeah. And by the end of the week, weekend, I thought I was going to be sick as fuck from the air conditioning air blowing around me, and I got... I got terrible allergies. I've been clogged up, nasal congestion for like the past four weeks. And any sign of bad air, I get scared because I don't know what's going to happen to me. I've had terrible sinus infections before and I get nervous. So we walked in the hotel room. I'm like, fuck, this smells dirty as fuck. (laughs) And I didn't want to take off my socks. I didn't want to sit on anything. The lampshade 
by my side of the bed had like brown streaks. I'm like, is there shit on the lamp? <laughs> <laughs> Some girl throwing it back. But the toilet seat was small. Like my cock barely fit under the bowl. All right, don't the, brag. The, <laughs> it flushed. It took so long to flush. I hate toilets that take forever mm. to flush. And this was one of those. Then I, while I was on the toilet, I looked over into the shower. I like I like slow flushing toilets though because when I'm shitting and I want to do a courtesy flush, it won't spray me on my balls or my butthole. I just don't got time to just sit. Well, there. you ain't got to sit there and watch it. You got to make I sure do. it goes down. If I'm standing and I do it, yeah. I, I watch this make it sure. I don't just press it. If you're standing? I don't just press the handle and get up. You got to hold it. It was like one of those you got to hold till it flushes. Uh, I get scared I'm going to break it if I don't hold it till it flushes. Oh, okay. I don't press and release. But anyway, we're not fucking toilet mechanics. But anyway, the hotel was it's disgusting. As, the toilet was disgusting as hell initially just from the feel of it, the air. Andy opened the uh, little air vent on oh. the air conditioner. He was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it wasn't a good... It, it's, it's a double tree. It's not Hilton's premium Okay, hotels. there's a there's a double tree in Delray Beach, Florida. I always stay in it. It's nice. It's great. What's Hilton's um, rankings? Where does it go? They have so many... They have like eight brands. But there's got to be a bottom... Is that like Home to Suites? No uh, way. No, no, no that's home nice to, one. Home to Suites is, is nice, but it's like college-y. Um, I'd say Waldorf Astoria. Never heard of that. That's, that's a Hilton. You don't need to look it up. It's okay. Hilton, Waldorf. Yeah. Waldorf Astoria is Hilton. Um, so that'd be at the top. Well, you're welcome for ordering for making you pick up vitamin C packets because I think yeah, we needed. That. I think that helped. <clears throat> but again, that goes to my question because when you got them, you're like, "Hey, does this even work?" And I'm like, "I don't know," <laughs> because say we didn't take any vitamin C, we don't know right now if we would have gotten sick. So we just do it just in case. Yeah. Vitamin C could probably those packets that you buy could probably do nothing Emergency. at all. Emergencies, they could probably have no effect at all. But who knows? Is it, is it a mental thing? It might it might just be, hey, buy this. We're telling you it works. So if you take it and you get sick, you're probably like, oh, damn, I was probably going to get sick anyway because this must be like a really terrible sickness. Um, too much for my vitamin C to handle. But if you don't get sick, you're like, oh, well, I guess it was the vitamin C. You just, it's great marketing. Yeah. It's, great, it's a great product. So the reason I was at Walgreens was because I took a lift to the gym because I had to get my, my workout in before I got annihilated. If, if we tell time. everyone, this is a verbal vlog, obviously. Yeah. Will people still want to watch the vlog? Of course. Because they want to see this happen? <laughs> they want to see okay. what... It's way different than it just It is talking. a lot different. It is a lot different. <laughs> it's visual. We're actually glassed. <laughs> <laughs> Our eyes are glassed. Yeah. Wobbling around. But I, I took a lift to the gym and there was a Walgreens across the street. So I texted Drew. I was like... And the Walgreens shit's not even in the vlog. I texted Drew. I said, what do you want from Walgreens? He said, emergency and a water jug. And water. And I think that may that have That water saved, saved me. I think the emergency may have saved me. Um, don't know, but like I said, the feel of the hotel, I felt like I was going to die. And I took emergency night and in the morning. So Remember my, remember my uh, townhome in Ponte Vedra? Yeah. That's the that's the feel I got there. It was very damp and very felt like I was. I didn't always. Feel, I, I didn't, was always sick. I didn't feel that at your place. Cool. Just, you just felt spiders. Yeah, spiders <laughs> and dust <laughs> in my nose <laughs> from this carpet. <laughs> I never vacuumed. We gotta vacuum this place. <laughs> I know. There's so much carpet in here. <laughs> Fuck. You gotta do it because you know I won't vacuum. Yeah, I love I love vacuuming for some reason. That's the only chore. Oh, you do? That's the only chore I like. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, go plug it in over there. <laughs> that accent was way too good. I gotta chill. It was. <laughs> Bites in your roots. <laughs> My roots. <laughs> but anyway, talk. Andy took his nap. I got home. Home. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I got back to the hotel for my gym. And we took off downtown. And went right to the fucking open bar. Oh my god, take me back. That's That part of the vlog is where I'm going to probably spend most of the time. Because we were there so long. It was 12 hours. So, this man, he eventually told us how much he spent on it. This man... Let's drop his name. Work, oh, okay. Does he want it? Nick. Nick. I don't I mean, think like he... that helps. <laughs> Nick. You know so many Nicks. This man, Nick... Ooh, how many... 
<laughs> this man, Nick. Nick. <laughs> Damn, I tried to emphasize it. You made it work. I did. This man, Nick. This <laughs> man, Nick. <laughs> this man, N I C K. He lives in San Antonio, Texas, and he manages or he uh, organizes the Bold City Brigade chapter in San Antonio. Bold City Brigade is the Jacksonville Jaguars fan group. It's worldwide, um, but mainly, you know, Jacksonville chapter is obviously the biggest. We've got Orlando, San Antonio, New York, all over the country. Anyway, this guy organizes the one in San Antonio. You know, they get together to watch home and away games. And then this apparently is the first time he coordinated a draft trip. And, you know, everyone's hyped to go to the draft because it's the first um, time that NFL fans can get together um, for a big event, really. What a, what a weird time for the Jags fans, too. Like, coming out of a pandemic, having the first pick. It's it it was, stars aligned. It was great for us. So this this man, he deserve he should be on he should get a, be on the podcast. This he man in the vlog. Yeah, he was in the vlog. Sorry, you're right. He got us at this awesome restaurant because I know it's awesome restaurant because the food is fan, was fantastic. Steakhouse in downtown Cleveland. Yeah, steakhouse in downtown is called Chop House. Cleveland Chop. We got a. From, for 12 hours, we got a buffet line with the best seafood. What are some things that were there? C- crab cakes. Uh, the cra- list is in the vlog. <laughs> crab cakes. Uh, had, shrimp. Uh, Very good shrimp. Oh, my God. The best shrimp I've ever had, probably. Lobster rolls. Lobster rolls. I was rolls. telling Andy, you can't get free lobster rolls anyway. No, but we had it <laughs> for 12 had hours. late. And, like... The service was, like, amazing. The, they had so many waiters and waitresses walking around making sure that you never had an empty cup. This was best. It was free service for us, and it's the best service I've ever had. Ever. Like, this, there, there was food on these, you know, always, displays. The, always and full. And they kept just bringing it out, bringing it out, bringing it out. The chefs. We, Shout out Jay-Z. The, uh, <laughs> the um, cooks were right next to us. We could see them, like, churning out lobster rolls and... These, I can't even. I don't even know what the food was because it was just exquisite. And yeah, it was very it was exquisite. Like, it was well, they did on the flyer. They, they said like heavy, heavy app, yeah, apps, heavy, heavy appetizers, heavy apps or hors d'oeuvres or whatever. But they were like top tier shit. And like they had po' boys. They had um, crab, they had sliders. They had these crab. Um, it was like crab hush puppies. Yeah, crab hush puppies. That was my favorite. With, that and the with, shrimp with the rumelade sauce. That rumelade sauce is amazing. I was throwing that on the fucking lobster roll. So I love seafood. That wasn't even it. He also got us. I don't know how he did it. I've never seen a twelve hours. I would, actually it was thirteen hours. It was thirteen hours of all you can drink, open bar, full liquor. Like there was no liquor that was off limits, even if they didn't even fucking have it. Yeah. I asked for. I was like, first drink I wanted. I said, "You guys have Crown Apple?" They said, "Oh no." I was like, damn, that's okay. I'll get Jameson and ginger ale. Fast forward like 50 minutes later, one of the waitresses comes to me and she said, oh, our owner went out and got some crown apple if you would like it now. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Y'all went and got the bottle you didn't have. To. They were probably pissed. They were like, damn, we don't have crown apple. Let's right? get that shit. That's how good the service was. They went out and got a bottle that they didn't have. We could have drank anything you wanted there probably. You got Ace of Spades. <laughs> That's an expensive champagne that the rappers frequently talk about, if you didn't know. Huh? It's like a thousand bucks a bottle. Huh? Um, but yeah, that shit was amazing. Like we couldn't, we couldn't stress enough how we were even there drinking all night it for was, free. I, I still can't get over it. Like I can't, I've never witnessed, like when you go to weddings, it's just for the ceremony. It's like three hours. Or it's just for the reception. Yeah, a few hours. And um, if they run out, they run out. And there's no replenishing. I don't know where else you get an open bar. Maybe if you're, I don't know where else they do it. But this 12 hour open bar, unheard of. I'm still can't believe they did it. That's not even it. They had, he brought in Jimmy Smith and uh, Hardy. Was Kevin that? Hardy. Kevin Hardy. In another like corner yeah, from Aaron like Beasley. the 90s. It was yeah. tanked. He was fucked up. Yeah, he was like all up in our, all up in our face, like for a 
an hour. Yeah. A- after, at the end of the draft. At the end of the draft, the he end, was the gone. Round. Yeah. Um, it was great, though. <laughs> and if you don't know, Jimmy Smith is probably the name that you would probably most recognize. He was one of the best wide receivers from the 90s. Um, he's probably Hall of, he's definitely Hall of Fame nominated worthy. Um, he may even be Hall of Fame worthy one day. Uh, so he was there. He got uh, pretty sauce. And they had local Jags media there doing hits. Yeah. To I think it was to to Jacksonville or was it? To yeah, Jacksonville? it was local Jacksonville media. It was Action News. Yeah. So they had live hits media coverage from our private party in Cleveland. Back to Jags fans watching on TV. We had. We had NFL players there. They had Madden set up. They had oh, they had yes, they had all the old school games. They, they had, had Madden, like, Techno Bowl. They had like five video game stations, and then they had a little you know two step. You're up in this little indoor like room, and then there's two VR stations, and then yeah, they, they had, had VR. Yeah, they had VR, and they had uh, that. that would have been funny. Tank. <laughs> they had a photo booth. They had Damn. all these decorations. They had these cutouts. And Nick from BCB was telling us how he coordinated this ten days before the draft. Like he got yeah, this, he got all this together, all so this together fast. ten days before the draft, and he worked with this event coordinator. Said she was awesome and that she does a bunch of draft parties for a lot of people. But I mean, it was I was, we I knew of this party because I told Andy about it. That's why we went. I saw the all like listings of, but I didn't. You know, think anything. I didn't think it was going to be like this amazing. That is a, it's the best party I've ever been to. And it wasn't even, you know, packed and shit. Like it wasn't filled. It wasn't like a big ass club. It was just. A yes, very, it was very intimate. It was very intimate group of Jags fans. It wasn't like too loud to where you couldn't hear people talking. Yeah, it was. It was, it was very intimate because all Jags fans. So everyone's got something in common. It was just so chill, but. You felt like you belonged there, and you could just get fucked up whenever you wanted. And you could order. People were ordering just straight shots. Yeah. It wasn't like an open bar at a wedding to where you couldn't get shots. You could get, you could order a round for the whole table. It was stupid. And at one point, when we came back after the draft, I was trying to get tequila, and they were running out of Don Julio. And I found Don out, Julio. I can't believe they had just Don Julio. I found out the next day that. Uh, two guys that were there were ordering all of the Don Julio. So that's why... I should have got creative. I should have tried shit that I never had before. I just got Jack and Ginger the whole night. All night? That was all you drank? Yeah. If you want to restart that. If. If. Yeah. Um, So we drank for like an hour and a half and then we had to go... We had to walk to, to a convention center like... 15 minutes to get our vaccination cards verified so we could get wristbands to go in to the vaccinated standing zone section. So we had to do that before 5 p.m. And like I mentioned, Andy's ticket was on Cole's phone. So we had to link up with him to do that. So we walked out of this bar. Andy took like a big shit. It took forever to get out of that bar. I was like, you I took a big what? You took like a big shot of the glass. I was like, shit. I was no. like, I don't remember that. There's a clip. I took a shot. There's a clip. You probably don't remember. It's on my phone, though. There's a clip of me saying, you finish that? You were like, if I... I, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to finish this and we'll leave. And he fucking chugged... You told me to chug it. He chugged his drink. Well, they told me to chug it. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that. He was babying his his jack. But, because I was was feeling it. I was, like, on the verge of becoming, like, dizzy. But once we hit... Once we walked out of the bar and I hit that cold air... Cold and rainy. I was so sober. The worst combo. Y'all know. So we got to this convention center... Pretty seamless process, walking through this big ass hall to get our vaccination cards verified with our ID, get a wristband, get out, and we go back to the party uh, before we had to go to the draft at like seven thirty or whatever. So uh, we obviously sobered up because it was cold and rainy, and we were standing in this big crowd. So I was like, let's get another round. Yeah. So we were trying to get as much drink as we could before we went down to the draft. Um, but the guy that was with us, Chris Ebrio, um, Shut up, he uh, he got us a couple beers while we were down there, but it wasn't enough. To, it was it was like Tall Boy Bud Lights because that's all they were really serving. But it wasn't enough to to keep us drunk while we were down there because it was freezing fucking cold on Lake Erie. Uh, it was like forty eight degrees, windy, rainy. The rain had let up, but it was still very cold down there. We stayed for like. Until Justin Fields went to the Bears. We were waiting for Justin Fields to get picked. That so, was so so where's the timeline? So we came back to the bar, drank more, 
Um, we're at the part where we got one right, and then we walked to the, to draft. the draft. Yeah. But you skipped the best. The part where we snuck the guy in. The hell was that? Is that my room? Yeah. <laughs> you got ghosts. I got ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> we did not sneak the guy in. He snuck himself in. Yes. Okay. So. What is, should we just leave this for the VAR? Because it's yeah. hard to explain. Yeah. It's hard to explain. And it's kind of, you kind of had to be there kind of thing. Yeah. You kind of had to be there. But there was a this guy. Man, yeah. He, there was a guy in our party that I've known from another game we met up at. Two two Jags games we met up at. And uh, he asked me if I was what I was doing uh, in Cleveland for the draft. And I told him about this Jags party. He RSVP'd. He showed up. Um, but he's a truck driver. So he was on his way to Tennessee. And Cleveland was on the way. Yeah. So... So he he's stopped like, there. So he asked, what, where are we watching the draft? We said, we got uh, access. We're going to the back zone. He's like, um, oh, I'll go with you guys. And I'm like, oh, man, we just had to do this whole thing at the convention center. It's very tight security. There's no way he's getting in. That's why I think to myself. He joins us. He somehow, through all the brown, sec- brown security, your security's trash. <laughs> um he somehow sneaks through because we all had to scan our phones. We all had to show our wristbands that we got at the convention you center. You had to hold your wrist. Yeah, up. while you're walking through, like down, they have like five checkpoints. Everyone, they're like, hold your wrist up. Let me see the wristbands. He just holds up a wrist with nothing on it, and we just walk through. <laughs> this dude said confidently, nothing yeah. on his wrist, Conf- up in the air. It was funny as shit. It's all in the vlog. Bigger, yeah, bigger. All in the vlog. How how he gets in. So we're at the draft. We're squeezed in like sardines. It's amazing. Not everyone's vaxxed. We're, we're, <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back, baby. Roger Goodell comes out. Everyone boos his ass, and I'm like, yes, this is so amazing. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps now. It's just very back to normal feeling, and. You know, everyone has their masks down because fuck you, we're in the vac zone. Don't cancel <laughs> us. I got some jack in me. Um, it's 2021. We're vaxxed. He says, the, oh no. So Roger Goodell brought some people out to get some like cheap pop. He Because everyone's booing Roger Goodell and he's like this. Roger Goodell kind of low key is a cool heel now. Heel is like a bad guy in wrestling. Roger Goodell is a cool heel now because it's like fun to boo him. He hasn't done anything terrible lately that like we hate him for, or at least me in any way. Um, so it's, he's, just, it's just a thing now. Yeah, he's like That's a heel. Yeah, it's like, huh? Uh-oh. He's like soaking in the booze, and then all of a sudden he introduces uh, the Browns' longtime s- Joe Thomas. S- Joe Thomas. Yeah. Uh, you There's know, like three King Brown, of, three Browns players. I King think. of yeah, Jim Brown, Joe Thomas, and Baker Mayfield. Uh, <laughs> Joe Thomas, Jarvis. King of King of the Browns. The crowd goes insane. It's most it's Browns fans by like ninety percent probably yeah. ninety ten. Mm-hmm. Um, All Browns fans. The crowd Obviously. goes yeah, and it's weird because it's like the first time in forever they haven't had a top ten pick, mm-hmm. uh, but they were there. Uh, it's, it, which reminds me of uh, why we were walking to this section. I was yelling, um, out of the way, Jags fans coming through. We have the or number one pick coming through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Out uh, of the way, number one pick coming through. <laughs> I know y'all Browns saying you know what I'm talking about, but get out of the way. <laughs> it's our turn now. <laughs> so I was a little lit after we left the bar. So yeah, yeah, so I was too. Um, so we're down there. We're waiting for the draft to start. We're getting pissed because it took for oh, it yeah, took a took while. For, what OAR? They had the no, concert. Not OAR. They had the concert. Kings, Kings of Leon. Leon. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> God for <laughs> gang. <laughs> Kings of Leon out. They do like twenty five songs we didn't want to hear. Somebody. We're just like, can we can we get this fucking shit started? So, so <laughs> the fans actually started booing when Kings of Leon. <laughs> Kings of Leon did another song, were, and the fans were booing them off the they stage. They were like, Kings of Leon, are you gonna come on for one more song? We we're like, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, people were telling me on Twitter that they cut to commercial when they were booing Kings of Leon. That's and they hilarious. Were I was dead because I contributed. Um, so they, so Roger Goodell finally came out again, said the Jack, uh, the, the 2021 NFL draft is now open. The Jacksonville Jaguars are now on the clock, and that was just a euphoric feeling. And Jaguars took up all yeah. ten minutes. It was funny because the Browns fans in front of me were like, "The Jags are going to take up all the clock," and I was like, "I hope they do." And you know, I had to get that little. You'll see it in the vlog. I said, "Milk." You probably saw that we already dropped the uh, pick announcement video, but I was like, "Milk the whole clock," or whatever, whatever the fuck I said. Take the whole ten. Yeah. Um, Take the end. Whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. But we took Trevor. 
We yelled. I was nervous. I was nervous. I was. I would would be a lot more nervous if I was tanked. I mean, if I wasn't tanked. Yeah. I would. I would have been a lot more nervous. Thank God for that. It was Trevor Lawrence. Heard his name. You know, you fucking hugged and shit, kissed almost. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) And then like, we just hung out until Justin Fields was picked, and we were, you know, like discussing the. Picks with like fans in yeah, front of us. We would have stayed for the whole first round, maybe. I don't know. That's a big maybe because of the open bar. Thirty-two picks. We had yeah. Oh, true, because it wasn't over till like midnight. Yeah, yeah there's no way. It the was, whole first round. It was too cold. Hey, we'll be back at the bar at one. <laughs> it was too cold. There was no liquor at the draft. It was only beer, and we had an open bar back at the bar. Yeah, we had a verbal agreement to leave when Justin Fields yeah. was picked, and the Bears helped us. Thank by you, Bears. Trading up. Thank you, Bears. They traded up and took him, and that was like a shock to us and everyone. Cause... How about how about this? Trevor Lawrence is now in the Jags, has not lost a regular season game in his life. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's gonna change unless we go seventeen and zero. Yeah, it's but... gonna change, but you know, never. I, I, I hate to be the guy that say he played in the S- ACC. So, well, don't be that guy. Boston College, Florida State's ass. Georgia Tech. Let me chill. Who else? I like, to be, I like to be devil's advocate. UNC. But yeah, he, he torched everybody in the ACC. He only lost in the college football playoffs. Two other quarterbacks who are now in the NFL as well. Uh, then he lose to Joe Burrow. Yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, lost to Joe Burrow, who was fucking amazing. Um, that team was amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know my history right now. I'm a little tanked, but you guys, every time you guys listen to this and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, you correct me while you're listening. It's kind of funny. So keep doing that. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So Justin Fields gets picked. You'll see like in the vlog, we we recorded like, we recorded the Dolphins pick, Falcons pick, uh, the Bengals pick, because we were like Jamar Chase or the offensive lineman. Yes, the Bengals pick was a big one. Uh, but the Falcons, or no, no, the Niners started it off. I actually cheered when they took Trey Lance uh, for some reason. I don't know why. I was excited for the moment. I think you were happy that it wasn't Mac Jones. I mean, I don't care. It's the Niners. But I think I was excited because it was a big moment in the draft. And I was like, finally, the draft is underway. The pick three has been made. Like, yeah. let's start this shit. Yeah, yeah. after, after um, Zach Wilson, we were like, draft starts now. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Atlanta... I know we, I said last week, I was just trying to be cute that they'd take Sewell, but they took Pitts. Um, don't know what's going to do with I didn't think Julio you Jones. also, you'd mentioned that they should take Pitts. You were talking about how Julio gets injured yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, might yeah, be at the yeah. end of uh, so Julio Jones, I think they, they might trade him because they're up against the salary cap. But you, you had a little Kyle Pitts to Falcons reference at some point. Bengals yeah. taking Jamar Chase over Sewell is, has been like destroyed by a lot of people. It has. Like, I know we had Browns fans in front of us, and they were glad that they took uh, Jamar Chase. Yeah, like, he, hell he, yeah. He asked, yeah, he asked the Browns fans. He like as a at first, I was like, why would you ask them that? But then he got a good answer from them. But they're like, in the division. <laughs> I know, but I I did tap him on the shoulder, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I was friendly. I was, I was like, I was, I was like, don't ask that shit. But then he was like, shut up, I'm asking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I, I got into with one of those guys. I got into a little argument with. Yeah. With him about Justin Fields because he tried to make the argument, and I've seen this on TV and, and on Twitter, that Justin Fields slot, slid in the draft because he's black. And that just, please chime in, obviously. Um, that just doesn't make sense because the Niners traded two first round picks for Trey Lance. Cam Newton went number one overall. Kyler Murray went number one overall. This narrative just pisses me off because I'm MAGA and because just kidding. <laughs> so am I. He said, chime, he said chime in. I'm on your side. <laughs> Dead. Um, and the. Uh, Patrick Mahomes just got $200 million. Russell well, Wilson's if, one of the best. Deshaun Watson's one of the best. Well, well, if you remember our guest on the last pod, I asked him, and he said it was about the epilepsy. That's shit. fine. Whatever the, whatever the reason he, slept, he slipped. I'm talking about this guy and the other people that say this, the same thing. This is not about race. Black 
quarterbacks run the league right now. People aren't letting someone slide because of his skin color. That is so insane to say. So I'd be saying that just because it's like the funny thing to say, in my opinion. Because he's black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> black. he's black. He's black. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not defending that take to my grave. I just like playing the race card because it's, uh, it's, have it. it's the thing to do, and I'm a nig. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I hardly ever believe everything I say. That's why. Mm. That's why I'm a sports reporter. That's <laughs> the thing they do. But um, being down there with all the fans was amazing. I had the perfect jacket to keep me warm. Had this Jags cut off, uh, not cut off, but it was a sleeveless jacket, and I had a long sleeve underneath it, with a nice hood, so the wind wasn't. Hitting. I was wearing three articles of clothing. You were, and then I took them off for our pick. I took yeah. everything off except for my tank for Trevor Tank. Take me fucking back. <laughs> I was, hey, you know, girls supposed to take me back to C- Caribbean, take me back to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> I was freezing cold in that tank top, and it took the Jaguars forever to pick. <laughs> I was like shaking by the end. So Justin Fields got picked. We were like, "You ready to go back and get fucking hammered?" Yes. I w- <laughs> God, no, no, there was no. I was. I don't think I was at a bigger high. God, you're nice. I don't think I was at a bigger high. Then after we took Trevor and we're walking back to the... Well, the walk back sucked. Well, the walk back sucked. But we took Trevor and we're walking. We finally get to the place and we're opening the doors. I was like, we just took Trevor and we're walking into... I got goosebumps. We're walking into an open bar for the next... Three hours. Three hours. I'm Maybe like, four. There's, there was, and then all you can eat food. Yeah. It's like, there's nothing better than we this. We walked in. We went, to, we went to the place where the food was at before. We're like, where's the food? Where's the food? Oh, yeah. They moved it. They're like, we moved it. over yeah. there. We, I... Uh, oh. I uh, have probably not been at a bigger high in my life than that <laughs> moment walking into Cleveland Chop after taking Trevor Lawrence. Imagine you didn't come. You saw, oh, yeah. You saw the vlog solo. I know, bro. <laughs> solo vlog. I'm so... Where you at, Andy? Where you at? <laughs> I made prior arrangements with Noah, and I wasn't going to break them because I'm a man of my word, and that just would be mean. And he said... You can go. I want you to have an experience of a lifetime. He called Boy, <laughs> did I! <laughs> My God, said, I don't think a I don't think a game's no a game can match this. Which is funny because Noah doesn't watch sports or care, so right? he doesn't. I had to. He knew. I I, I kind of have been uh, talking about it all the time. Oh, we're gonna draft Trevor Lawrence. We're gonna draft Trevor Lawrence. It's gonna be the best quarterback ever, um, and the draft and. He could, he, he could see the passion in your voice, mm-hmm. is what you're saying. So, he said he wanted to be the best uh, significant. Wait till he sees the vlog. This thing's going to be crazy. Uh, um, you're never going again, is what he's going to say. <laughs> the, I have an hour of footage to go through next like two days, however long it takes. Good luck. Well, luckily, you're probably not doing anything the next two days. Yeah, so. I'm yeah. Unemployed. Um... So we get back. We're watching uh, the Jags' next pick, Trevor Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne. So, are we going to be the Clemson Jaguars or the Jacksonville Tigers? I like Clemson Jaguars. <sighs> Clemson Jaguars. Well, no, we got to we got to keep the city right. But I don't want to change the, the tiger. I mean, the cat. But we're close enough. Clemson Jacksonville I like, Tigers. I like Clemson Jaguars better. Okay. Clemson um, South? What about or how it yeah, Clemson mm, South. Sounds racist. Um But yeah, we took we took the running back at first. Andy didn't like the pick. I think he's grown to like it now. Because at first you didn't. You're like, why would we take it? Well we because it was so close to the end of the draft, I can see how you want to take ETN so the Bills don't take them. Because we need playmakers on the team. Um, and we have a lot of wide receivers. Maybe Elijah Moore would have been good there. And it's, we, and, it's, and I, I think they did it because it's a player that Trevor can trust immediately. That yeah, that they have they love each other. It's so funny because I remember and, watch and our running back depth isn't you know true great. You know Carlos Hyde. Ew, he's our uh, backup. So yeah, the, the ETN pick has grown on me, but I still taking running back in the first round unless ETN is going to play. Which he could a lot of wide receiver maybe in the slot maybe a little motion out um, maybe a lot of movement with him um, which I hope and I think they will I think they're using him pretty creatively um, then I'm excited but other than that I, I don't like taking running backs so if 
someone that can be also utilized as a receiver, I guess it's okay. End of round one, cool. But I'm not taking a Leonard Fournette anywhere in the first round. You know, those running backs that are purely um, run it up the middle. Uh, power running back. Power running back. That's just, it's, it's so dumb. Brandon Jacobs. <laughs> Good name. Um, so after the picks. Um, Any the, other surprising the, picks in the first round? Uh, Najee Harris, we were waiting for him. He went to the Steelers. Um, but that wasn't really surprising. They didn't have any run game last year. Eagles traded up for Devontae Smith. Yes, Jalen Hurts, a little Bama connection. Um, he did go to Oklahoma after, but they still got history, I think. They do. Um, Maybe. We'll see. But uh, we ended the night, first round, with karaoke after – because they stopped the food. They stopped the food first, right? Yeah, they packed up the food. Uh, the drinks were still going, but I think we were good. Andy was definitely good because if you saw the karaoke video I posted on Twitter, um, oh Andy, my God. Andy was not able to recite Take Care. It's my song. And that's his jam. I can't. Oh, I, <laughs> I've heard that song so many times and I cannot sing it. I was so offbeat and I was I had the words wrong. He had the words on screen and he could and I not still sing it. He was like, yo, I was like, you know, we doing this? You, Drake, I'm Rihanna, like every like, time. He said, yep. And uh, he got Drake, and he couldn't perform. <laughs> and he was looking at me for help. I'm like, you got it. I'm it was not, incredibly embarrassing. I'm not doing Drake. That's not me. I do Rihanna. I sing. Um, but we have, I think I recorded the entire performance. Uh, didn't post the entire performance. I only posted that little snippet of Andy like humming during the Drake part. But I will put the, I don't know if I want to put the entire thing in the vlog, but... I'm still trying to figure out if I want to break this up because I feel like there's going to be so much good footage that one long ass video may be. Why would that be bad? Because I'm trying to keep people's attention. I mean, it's it's good attention, but how many how many times are they going to click on a draft vlog? Like, how many different titles can we come up with a draft vlog? Well, it, I feel like I could do day one, day two, and have them because I'll be. I feel like I can put them like back to back days or whatever, or drop same time. I don't know. I'll probably just do one, see how long it is. Yeah. And yeah. Then, then you can just play them. Yeah. If you want. Exactly. Um. So yeah. And that's not where the night ended. Oh no. <laughs> it's 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 one thirty. We're doing karaoke with Jimmy Smith. Jaguars great. He's out there sauce doing karaoke with everyone except um, me because white ass music. Why? Why? Because I, I would know. I was on my two hours of sleep. I was you were pissed. Drunk. At the... I was pissed. I was drunk. Oh as, no! I was drunk as fuck. I was tired as shit. And meanwhile, know, the music, bro. Music is what makes me fucking want to yeah, party. Right. And they're playing these white ass songs that I hate hearing. Meanwhile, I was in the middle of the whole <laughs> yeah. thing going. So and he's singing along with Jimmy Smith, like telling me to get up. I'm like, fuck you. I want to hear some hip hop. They're playing like Sweet Caroline, Journey. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's like, I was like, good I'm... times never felt so good, so good. I was looking at Eric, he's like, so good. I was like, no. I was, it's because I was sitting in the booth watching all this happen, waiting for an Uber. <laughs> waiting for an Uber, waiting for a Lyft. I had both apps up with our hotel wow. address, ready to fucking go, and none of them were getting a ride. Because obviously there's thousands of people here in downtown Cleveland probably trying to get the fuck out of here. And the drivers are probably not in abundance because of many reasons. We they're, they're at home with their stimmies. Many reasons that there are not plenty of drivers out right now trying to drive drunk ass people home in Cleveland. A uh, dangerous city apparently. Um, so I'm pissed. I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to get a ride. I tried three times to call an Uber and a Lyft. And I didn't get any pickups. So I know a guy who I met when I met Jordan Poyer for the second time in Miami. I met him at Jordan Poyer's birthday celebration at a Miami hotel pool, Cabana. And so I was with Bush, I was with Poyer, and Poyer's friend, Nick, another Nick. Jeez. <laughs> another Nick. That's where I met him. And he's from Cleveland. 
So he works at a strip club in Cleveland. And I told him I was coming for the draft. So he texts me while I'm sitting in the booth. He says, yo, come by to the strip club. Uh, I'll get you guys in. And I was like, yo, Andy, you want to go to the strip club? <laughs> I was this like, is like, like 1.45. Yeah, it a. was damn. It was almost 2 a.m. 12 I'm, hours of open bar. 12 hours of open bar. I'm tired. I'm like... I got to do something. I can't just sit here and wait for a car. I got to go somewhere. So this trip club opened till four. So we go there. We get there. We walked there in the ghetto, apparently, by railroad tracks. Cleveland's, like, very industrial. but Very industrial. It's, it's less industrial than Pittsburgh, but it's still very industrial. A lot of hills, too. Yeah. So it's very tough hilly, on the legs. Very hilly railroad That's tracks. That's why my legs hurt, I think. It probably wasn't from the 40. It was probably oh, from yeah. all the hills. We walked down more than we went up. All right. Well, we did go up on Thursday night to go back to the bar. We're like, ugh. Uh. But we get to the strip club entrance. The bouncer says, yeah, you can't get in with strip with uh, sweatpants. I was wearing sweatpants. Uh, if you see the uh, karaoke video I posted, that fit was what I wore to the strip club. And it was comfortable. And I didn't want all my shit ruined, so I wore sweatpants. And he's like, yeah, we can't let you in. And I was like, even if I know somebody that works here, you told me to come. He's like, yeah, I can't let you in. And Andy's like, God, I'm so sick of people saying that they know somebody and you can't. No, come in. that was night two. You said it that night too. You were like, I hate when people say like they can get you in somewhere. You said it both. Nights. I don't remember saying that night one. I remember because I remember your complaints. <laughs> uh, I keep tabs. <laughs> but I was like, okay. So we walked down the road and Nick texted me. He's like, where are you at? I said, down the road. He wouldn't let me in because I have sweatpants. So he said, come back. So we go back. But we, when I say that, I say it, I was saying it, like, I wasn't pissed. I was, I thought it was funny. So I was trying to make a joke. It's I funny. I didn't see any smile. Is that, <laughs> 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 but I do, I stand by it. I think it's funny that when someone, every time it seems to me that every time says, Hey, I got you. Come to the come to the bar. Come to the club. I got you. And there's a bouncer I'm out there. I'm like, this isn't working. The bouncer, they probably doesn't even know you. And sure enough, we get there. The bouncer's like, no, I can't come in. I was like, oh, yeah, I figured. So anyway. Yeah, but I'd be doing that too. I'd be saying like, hey, I know somebody that can get us in. And sometimes it takes longer than expected, but we eventually get in. You just got to be patient with it. Both nights, patient with it. We got in. We didn't even get to fucking Friday. <laughs> But, so we go back, He Nick texts me, he says, yo, come back. And there's a longer line now, a bunch of black people, it's a very ratchet area. I'm not saying black people are ratchet, <laughs> just saying that area is ratchet. But there were two, two dudes in line that had sweatpants too, so I was like, is he going to turn them away too? So we like, kind of hid away, so like, they didn't see me getting in with sweatpants, because you know I got the plug and shit. So they got turned away, and then when they left, got out of sight... The bouncer came to us and he was like, go into the fucking kitchen. He was pretty rude. All bouncers are <laughs> such dicks. Such dicks. He was like, big, bald, meathead dude. He's like, Get, go, go, to the, go through the fucking kitchen. So we go through this fucking kitchen in a strip club to get in. There's a stripper in the kitchen, like, weeping. I saw her in my peripheral. I didn't want to look at her because I didn't know if she was going to be, like, looking like a meth addict. I didn't want to see her. I didn't want to know what was going on. I didn't make eye contact, but I saw her, and I just, boop, hit that right, kept it moving. We got into this strip club. Nick texted me that Michael Irvin was there. That That was a big reveal. I told Andy, I was like, he told me Michael Irvin was there. You thought that was a lie, too. He was like, ain't no way. Yeah, ain't no fucking way. But he was there, and Andy couldn't keep his eyes off of him. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was just examining the girl he was with. He was in the corner of the bar area inside the strip club. And he had his back to everyone. And I don't know if if this girl was someone who worked there or if there's a girl that he had already had plans to go to the bar with or some, a girl that he met at the bar sitting at the bar. Um, but he had, it was clear he did not want any attention to it toward himself at all. (laughs) If you saw, he was on stage the whole night. I didn't see him night two. Um, but he was, he was chatting up this this youngin. She was, I think she was over eighteen for sure. Yeah, she had to be. She she looked over eighteen, but you know, looks don't mean nothing any, anymore. But um, she was young, but she definitely definitely over eighteen, definitely legal. Like she just, but she's just very young, attractive girl, and he's fifty five. Yeah, 
which was weird. Obviously, it's. And I'm weird. wondering, like, what did, did he? Is is this woman know who he is? Is he? Is that the conversation they're having? Is he explaining to her about who he is and that he was a wide receiver? Because there's no way she knows this. And because if she doesn't know it, what are you guys talking about? Like, what do you have in common? With this girl you're talking to right now. Yeah, I, I wonder what the hell they were talking about. But he was, the entire time we were there, Michael Irvin was talking to this girl the entire time we were there. Back to everybody. There was a roped off section. There was no one else back there. It wasn't a huge section. He was at the bar. It's probably like, I can't even measure it. But it wasn't, it wasn't too far of a distance from us. Like, if we wanted to, we could have easily just whoop, walked in there and said, "What's up, Michael Irvin?" Oof, that would have been. Oh, that would make me so uncomfortable. There was only one person guarding the little rope, anyway, to get to him. So we could have been. Hey, Michael, want to come on the pod? We could have been bold as fuck and did that shit, but we just obviously didn't. We didn't give a fuck. But we were told he was there and that he was talking to this little girl, and we and he was looking. <laughs> we were just wondering, like, what could they possibly be talking about? And then Andy was like. I wonder if he took her back and <laughs> pounded her. And I was like, I don't want to imagine uh, Michael Irvin giving strokes. <laughs> imagine. Oh, God. Because what do you think? Do you think that led to nothing? Do you think he did that I and that led to nothing? I don't know. Surely I, it had to. I joked about her getting up to Michael Irvin's penthouse in Cleveland. Probably happened. I have no idea. But, you know, when you're... When you're who he is, a not just like an NFL Hall of Famer, but like somebody with that Cowboys helps. Not if you don't know who the fuck they are. But we don't know what their conversation was. But my point is, when you're somebody of that prestige, you have this ego about you. You think you can do you whatever, do whatever you, want. you want. You can get anyone you want. Talk up whoever you want. You know, tell him you have these luxurious things to take him back to. Sounds familiar. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Chill. I don't abuse people. Chill. Like I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, he's probably just like, "Hey, come back to my place. Got to overlook Lake Erie." Mm. I don't know, but I eventually got an Uber out of that bitch. We got to the hotel at like three a.m. and we knocked. <laughs> So that was Friday <laughs> night, <laughs> Thursday night, first round of the draft. That was a fucking mouthful. <laughs> it was goodness. Night two, pretty. Wild. Then there's another <laughs> night. <laughs> night two was pretty wild as well. Night two was more wild. Was it? In my opinion. Yeah, it was pretty wild. But my first time at a club since the pandemic. But the good thing about night two, day two, was that we didn't get it started till late afternoon. We kind of like hung around in the hotel, uh, chilled. I took a I took a nap, which <laughs> we were like we were watching content about drafting Trevor Lawrence, and I got to speak to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I didn't really. It was kind of weird because I'm we're like watching all these press conferences and shit, and I'm like, yo, Trevor Lawrence. I, if I was like recently drafted, and I have to answer all these media questions. They're going to piss me off because they ask the same dumbass shit. He seemed kinda, pissed off. It's kind of boring. He, so His answers are boring. And the questions were boring. Yeah. And they always are. So the Jags DM'd me while we were like chilling in the hotel the morning of the second, third round. And they were like, hey, you want to join our Twitter spaces with Trevor Lawrence? I was like, how do I join? They said, you just click on our profile icon. When we're live, you'll get a notification. And we'll make you a speaker. And I was like, okay. <clears throat> I didn't prep any questions or what the fuck I wanted to say. I kind of just told Drew, hey, I'm going to be talking to Trevor Lawrence at 3 o'clock. And um, there was this reporter on there. She introduced myself and Eric Dilla, another Jags fan who's very popular on Twitter right now. Um, and then he went. He spoke first because he you know, started this whole thing with the Trevor Lawrence toaster and the charity and stuff. And then when he finished his conversation, I was up. And it was like I had to just, you know, say something off the top of my dome. I had nothing prepared. So my voice was kind of shaky because there was, like, hundreds of people, you know, listening in. The Jags were in there. Trevor Lawrence was in there. Uh, Ian Rappaport was in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. ETN was in there. This is in the vlog. It's on my Instagram. You can see the names of the people who are in this um, chat room. And... I didn't want to like 
you know, ask him any fucking stupid questions about, you know, what what does he yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. What do you think about being in Duval with Urban Meyer and Trevor? Uh, He's gonna get asked that shit every time. So I was like, you know, I'm just excited to have you here. Looking forward to seeing what you and Travis bring to the Jags. That's all I said, but I repeated myself like three times. Um, but he's like, yeah, thanks, man. Really excited. Deep voice. De- very deep voice. But, you know, I wasn't expecting him to say nothing else because, you know, what the fuck? He's, he's going to be doing media for the next month and beyond, especially if he's good. He's going to be in media conferences all the time. And I'm not trying to be this annoying question-asking motherfucker. You did I, say, I hope you're not as hungover as we are right now. I did is, that because of you. Is, yeah, I know. I told you to. Andy asked me to ask to tell this dude if you not to be as hungover as us. And afterwards, I was like, "Fuck, this man's Christian as fuck. Ain't no way he drinks." I didn't think about that when he told me to do that. I was like, "Christian drink." I was just like, "That's pretty funny," because I'm fucked up right now. <laughs> <laughs> how about like after everything, and I took a nap, and I, uh, you know how you go out drinking and you have like the shits the morning after? Oh hell yeah, Apparently. Jameson especially. <laughs> Jameson makes me leak. I was taking a nap. And I'd never done this before, but I was, like, shitting in my sleep. You were. I kept doing little farts. It was at least six times. This <laughs> six? Yeah. I was, remember... Okay, it was so a like, symphony orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it happening once, and I was in it, like, woke me up, uh, like, midway through they my They always nap. wake you up. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I've, done, I've done this before. You know, I've experienced shitting in my sleep. Not shitting, but farting. So it was, it was midway through my nap, and I woke up, I was like... Wait, did that really just happen? Yeah, you're like, you, did I just did? I, and I was like, fart. I was like, no, nah, that was probably just my imagination. So I went back to sleep, and then it happened again. And I was, and I can't remember. I said I was like, sorry, I can't remember. What I said, uh, but you said something like you gross fuck, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I heard you like the first two times. I said nothing because I was like, oh, I do that, <laughs> but it happened. It kept happening. I'm like, you're a sick fuck. <laughs> and I was laying in his bed. His bed. Kept farting. I was like, yeah, I know you can't control it. It's like me. It's like me when I'm peeing in the bed, blacked on Jameson. Like, That's my thing, farting. <laughs> farting. I got it on piss myself. <laughs> you, you just make the room smell like shit. <laughs> That room smelled like shit. We had mold and cum and shit. <laughs> Good combo. Who, whoever fucking st- <laughs> stays in 109, <sighs> you're fucked. <laughs> that hotel room got to be disgustingly clean. Mm. I couldn't be a hotel housekeeper. I couldn't imagine. But this is we're still on Friday. Friday morning, round two of the draft. We're still in the hotel room chilling, you know, recovering from Thursday night. We didn't even get out to the stadium on Friday round two until like 4.30, 5 o'clock maybe. Draft started at 7 p.m. that night, I think. Um, but we had tickets to the draft experience from 4 to 7 p.m. This yeah, We got there right at 5.30. This motherfucker really wanted to do the 40-yard dash. He'd been hyping that shit up for like a week. And we didn't even get out there until... Like 5.30. And there were lines everywhere. We got into the Brown Stadium. So we got to see like inside the stadium. And uh, the, their seat layout. And uh, it's a pretty nice stadium. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. it was, it's very cool. There's so many hills in Cleveland. So you walk into the stadium. And you're already on the second floor. Because it's like on top of a hill. Uh, that was very cool. Uh, so kudos to Brown's fans. Uh, cool stadium, uh, but we, yeah, we go in there, explore that. We gotta, yada, yada. People are kicking field goals, NFL experience. We leave. We go to the forty yard dash area. We had to ask for the forty yard dash because we're in the stadium looking for it. We don't see nobody running. We see all this shit laid out on the field. We're like, where is the forty yard dash? So I asked somebody, and they were like, oh, it's outside. So we walk outside, um, go to the forty yard dash, and he was like, oh man, we're we're in line for the forty yard dash, and he's like, oh, we're gonna miss the first pick. It's funny because when the first pick was announced of the second round, he he's like, "Who?" Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was like, "Who?" He was worried about missing it. But like while we're in line for the forty yard dash, we're in this wet ass grass. Intern Timmy just called me. Don't know what he called wants. You. He's never called me before. Should we should we call him back live? Yeah. See what intern Timmy wants. 
Remember, he used to be our manager. But yeah, we're in line. Grass was very slippery because it was wet and damp and raining the night before. Hello? Timmy, you know we record Monday nights. Did I interrupt the pod? Yeah, you're live on Dunn and Drew. Hello? That's why you're into well. <laughs> <laughs> this is This is fun. What you want? What, why are um, you calling me at 10 p.m.? Because I have a two and a half hour drive and I was lonely. Oh, oh my God. That's cute. I didn't think Andy like, would pick oh. up. <laughs> you called me first? Yeah. I haven't talked to you in a minute. Damn. Damn. I think it's because uh, I called you out for not hitting me up that one time. I think, oh, it's because when I went to Atlanta, you were like, oh, I live in Atlanta. I was like, I forgot, nigga. You never hit me up. Mm, that's true. And you work, for, you work for Dad Entertainment. You got a whole credit card. Text me? Uh, we're business partners? I, I, bro, I texted you the other day and basically implying we should talk more. And you're like, nah, I don't text. <laughs> <laughs> I told you out. I know, but you know I'm on like every fucking media ever. You can email me. You can snap me. You can LinkedIn me. You can Facebook me. You can snap me. You can Instagram DM. You can Twitter DM me. You can do anything. Right, it doesn't right. even have to be text. I look at every single app every fucking day. Text back on community. Shit. I'm a little plastered. <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying hi for your drive? Must be a dead zone. <coughs> oh, and turn to me. That's why I don't call him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, we ran the forty-yard dash. Should we spoil it here or wait for the? No, bar? wait for the bar. Yeah. There's a teaser on Twitter. Go look at that. The. Uh, it doesn't do any good, but you can look at it. I got an idea of how I'm gonna edit that. It should be funny. Vlog gonna take me a while. Not like all week. Just give me all. Give me a day. I'll finish it. Um. But after we did the draft experience and the 40-yard dash, which is only really the only thing we wanted to do. Watched our pick, and then we went to a, a bar. Yeah, we watched our first pick, and then we took the scooters because we were about to walk. Because it was the bar, same guy that got the uh, open bar for 12 hours the night before, had two tables at this lit-ass German-themed bar. Literally, like you felt like you were in Germany. The waitresses and the waiters were dressed in German gear. When we walked in, they were already everyone on was everyone was standing on the table, th- throwing their mugs of beer around. Every drink came in like a big mug, big I, ass mug. I was like, "Fuck, I gotta go to Europe." This I know this is how they do it. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same guy, like I said, that had the table the night before had two tables here at this German bar. So we were there watching the Jags three picks in the second round. We were ripping shots out of the uh, skis. They call it shot ski. Did one in Canada before, so I knew what the fuck the drill was. Mm. We did, uh, so two Jags fans next to us, they were like, what do you guys want a shot of? First thing I thought of was Jaeger. So oh, we, and that was so good. Good call. So we were taking Jaeger shots all night. I think we did like four or five. Yeah. And it was pretty fucking good. It was really good. Like, it tastes, yeah, tastes I, good. I would have, I would, Jaeger might be my go-to shot now. Jaeger's, Jaeger's a great shooter, and that's what they said when I said that. And I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just like, I heard, when I went to the bathroom, I, was, I heard them say Jaeger, but they were talking about this beer. They were talking about this Jaeger something beer. So I was like, oh, shit, I want a Jaeger shot. So mm. we were ripping Jaeger shots. We need a Jaeger for the house. Okay, no. Why? I'm not ripping Jaeger shots here. Jaeger's so gross. What? Like, if you're drinking Jaeger in your house, it don't taste the same. No, just around. for just for shots. I don't know if it, I don't know. You do a whole shot ski here. There are two bottles I still need to fill this cabinet up with. But why two? I want uh, Casamigos and Captain Morgan. And some rum. Summer is coming. Up. Summer rum. rum. Oh, God, but we're so about, nice. I'm about to be at a retreat. Summer. Uh, summer when are, when are we gonna hate liquor? We're drinking a lot. I don't see an end in sight. That's scary R.I.P. um but yeah uh so we're at this german bar watching our picks we don't know who the fuck we're taking we don't know any of the guys we're just getting drunk with the other jags fans we're getting trolled by the entire bar because the entire bar is full of browns fans so they're doing their dumbass chant while we're ripping shots let's go brownies yeah we're ripping shots browns are doing their chants but then they ultimately cheer once it's over 
Um, it's funny because I got a snap message from somebody saying that they their friend saw me at that bar ripping shots. What? Yeah. How do you do this? I don't know, but whoever that friend was never came up to me at that bar. But someone told me that their friend was there seeing me rip fucking Jaeger bombs out of a ski. Um, so my girl met up with us there, and I told Andy before we went out that I had a friend that lives in Cleveland already that I went to FAU with. Um, that was going to meet us out afterwards. So I hit him up. He said, come to the flats. So we met out at the flats, which is an area in Cleveland with a bunch of bars uh, on the water out there. And at first we went to this beer place. There was, we couldn't sit down. We sat at a table. They kicked us out of it. So we kind of just like, we're hanging around. I think we all got like one drink each. Um, Andy got a pizza and um, Absolutely I, delicious. My friend Martin was like, hey, you want to get, I can get us a table at Ivy. I know the owner. I had been to Ivy before, but it was after it closed, so I had never partied there. So I was like, cool, yeah, I'm down. This place is kind of whack. We're not doing shit. We're just standing around. I'd rather go to a club, hear some music, drink at a table. Um, so Andy gets his pizza right when we're about to leave. I was like, I don't want to leave. You know, he's waiting for his pizza. But it came right as we were leaving. It was kind of funny how that worked out. Like I said, everything was perfect. Um, so we all were in this big party. It was like me, Andy, uh, my girl, her friend, my friend Martin, and his like, I think he had three or four friends with him. So we had this party of like seven or eight people. I don't know how you do it. And we all walked to this bar. And there's a huge line outside of it. And this girl sees me in line. And she's like, oh, my God. Eric Dunn. Really? Yeah. She's like, oh my God, you follow me on Twitter. I've been following you for so long. Oh my God. She pulls out her phone, shows me that I follow her on Twitter. Go, you probably see? like where, you know, John A was with, with you. John A was just rolling her eyes, yeah. but she was one of those people before. Yeah. So I was like <laughs> making fun of it's her. Like groupies. <laughs> <laughs> but that was funny. Uh, Andy was skeptical that we weren't going to get in, but I think he just hadn't eaten his pizza fully yet. No, was I, was, I, was, I was literally <laughs> trying to... It was a bad time joke because... I I was seriously joking because of the night before, you know, we try we someone's like, "Hey, I get you in." And then we get to go through trouble. Again, "Hey, I get you in." And then, you know, su- surprise. So, while I was not angry and pissed about the uh, moment, I was trying to make a joke, bad time joke. I I regret it. Bad joke. Yeah. Not even a joke because yeah. I meant it, but I wasn't actually like pissed. It was like, it was bad oh, timing because so I was drunk as fuck. Eric I yelled, "Yeah, I, he I, was I fucking bullied him." <laughs> he was uh, when he when Eric snapped at me, I was like, "Oh Jesus, that uh, did not go over well." <laughs> yeah, it did it because I know Martin, and he wouldn't fucking tell us that he could get us in somewhere if he was lying about it. I even joked with Martin, and I was like. I said something about a, not a, not us getting in. He was like, I'm insulted you even said that to me. And next thing you know, we're all walking in and we go to the table. I, oh, I hate well, I hate skipping lines. Lines. We had a table. Those people didn't. I know, but it's just, it's weird. Because you know? we, were, we were in but line. The bounce, I, did the bouncer not look pissed? He did, but he like, pissed all again. bouncers look pissed. I, like, yeah, I it's so annoying. All I bouncers just, are pissed. They hate their jobs. They I just hate, this, I hate the vibe. It's just very, it makes me very uncomfortable. But when we were walking in, I heard somebody in the fucking line waiting saying, damn, we should have got a table. You should, because you get in. Oh, you get in if you get a table? Yeah. Of, like, you get to skip the line? Yeah. You okay. don't have to wait for your table. Damn. Because you're, pay, I, I you're wish paying I knew. hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Like, those people in line are just paying for drinks. At the okay, bar. I wish I knew that. I would have been like, fuck you. Yeah. So now you know. Get like, a fucking table. You get a table, you get in. You fucking... You're paying hundreds of dollars, sometimes thousands. Not at this bar, but like South Florida. You get a table, you're skipping the line. <laughs> you're, you're getting bottles, you know? You get in, you get priority. It's like first class on a plane. Um, so yeah, we get into the bar. We got this table. They bring out a bottle of Jameson and a bottle of Absolute. Nobody touched the Absolute. I'm like, who got that? I'm like, Martin, why did you get Absolute? Why do you have Absolute on your computer? (laughs) Brand deal. (laughs) I guess this, well, contract's over. Absolute's not gross, but I don't drink vodka at bars. No, no, no. I'll drink it, but it's rare. I drink whiskey. So the Jameson was a good call, but the Absolute, I don't know. This was, I think, maybe my second only table service. 
So it was a cool experience. You know, they come out with the freaking lights and cheer you on. And like the best part, like I mentioned before, great music all night. Yeah. yeah. Like bangers that I can shake my ass to and fucking get lit to. Like hip hop, my shit. They also, also they play that white music at the end of the Cleveland Chop. They played a... Party in the USA. They played, they played some white music that Andy was listening to. I didn't mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. They played some punk pop. Yeah, yeah really. I didn't mind that. I was at the table. I was having a good time. I was lit. But I was mad at Cleveland Chop because I was trying to get the fuck out. But I'm at a table. You play anything. I'm singing to it. It was a different vibe, different atmosphere at that time. I was just happy we were at a table because the first, the previous bar we were at with the beer garden, like, I couldn't have stayed there all night. I would have gotten bored. So mm. when he said that he had a Even table, shot skis every five minutes? No, the... Uh, oh, that place. Yeah, that place was... The first the yeah. first bar after the German bar where you got the pizza. No, no one could sit there all night. Nobody could, nobody could sit and it was just beer and the, there was no vibe. It was like kind of you sit outside of the fireplace and that's it. So I needed that table. Um, but we were there till they closed, <laughs> till the lights came on. We shut shit down. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny roasted you for saying that. Yeah. No, you just stayed until they closed. Because it shut shit down. Because I say that a lot. Like, that's like a joke with her and me. Oh, I was okay. like, sorry. Like, sorry. Yeah. Jesus. I'm not I yelling. Guess I'm, <laughs> guess I'm not in like, when, that when, joke. No, no, no. You're not. But when we were at uh, Cantina here in Jacksonville, and we were there until the lights came on, until they kicked us out. Cantina. And shit. Yeah. The, Mexican place. Oh yeah, when yeah, first yeah. Came you said, oh yeah, you said. Yeah. I was like, we shut I, shit down. I shut shit yeah, down. That's where it started. So uh, I was like, we uh, shut shit down. I was like, shut. when the lights come on, that's when I say we shut shit down. So lights came on. A restaurant. Right, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're closed now. We shut shit down. <laughs> so lights came on at this club. I was like, we shut shit down. But John A was we're so- just closed. John A <laughs> was sober as fuck with her friends, so she. Was I like, know they didn't drink at all the whole time. I know, but pissed me off, Loki. They couldn't. They're, they're like, well, John only A, one of them had to drive. John A did it because she one she drives and she's like got this pact where she's not drinking because she's been studying for the MCAT. So she doesn't want anything to, to deter her away from her mm-hmm. future as a doctor. So I understand that. It's coming up in two weeks. Anyway, um, our night ended at that VIP table, and we went back to the hotel. Did we get food? No. You had pizza. Uh, I don't think you got snacks that night. No, I had a leftover from the, from oh, the day yeah, before. From the lunch. Oh, yeah, our lunch. That was melted. so good. Kind of. It was I. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't even I. I. I didn't like the mac and cheese. Actually, you're right. That wasn't that good of a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like my sandwich, and I didn't like my wings. So, yeah. Trash. Yeah. But I went. I ordered. Cool environment. I ordered from it again the next day, though. Saturday when he left. Uh, you didn't go to Winking Lizard? Mm-hmm. I did delivery. Everyone raved. Oh, I wasn't leaving that hotel on Saturday. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but Saturday... That was all me. That's when Andy left. So, my girl texted me, said, "Does Andy need a ride?" And then she Aww. went, "Don't say that." Oh, she just wanted to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't gonna expose that, but she's like, "But she's real, but fake, you know, like us." She was like, "You know, I only said that because I want to see you, but I'll take him." But she likes you. Does so she? Did, so did Martin. Yeah. But you were like, "Damn, yeah, yeah. can you remember?" Martin was tanked. He was. Martin's a fun guy, though. He he got to meet Martin, my boy from FAU. Like when I first got to FAU, freshman, sophomore, Martin was. I was with Martin all the time, and he's the guy that introduced me to some of the lingo I still use today. So Andy was like, "That's where that came from." Like when I say "buddy" and like when I use some some of my inflections. It what, came, is, what is he? Suburban? Yeah, suburban. What? Serbian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's from the suburbs and Serbian, so he's suburbian. So he got a little accent. Yeah. He, he gets a little longer draw on his words. Yeah. A little drawn out. He's uh, fluent in Serbian, so he's a, he's a fun guy, but he's fucking crazy. And, like, he's one of those people that when he's drunk and he's talking to you out, you can't say anything to him because he will just go on and on. And he won't listen to anything you yeah, say. Yeah, that's there, <laughs> if you know the, these kind of drunk people, like the minute I started talking to this guy, I was like, 
all right, he's talking to me. He just wants me to act like I'm interested and say, yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. Because if I try to tell a story of my own, he won't give a fuck. <laughs> At all. Like, so I was just like, when people are like that, I just check out. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, you're, you're, you're yes. right, you're right. I'm like, I don't try to attempt to give to the conversation. Because one, he might not remember it. And two, he probably doesn't care. Yeah. You got to feel out the type of people you're with when they're fucked up. And Martin's the type of guy where he'll just talk, talk, talk. You say something to him, he don't give a fuck. <laughs> he, ain't re- he ain't registering that shit. He's just saying what he wants to say and what he yeah. wants to do. And if you try to have a conversation, chill. Just say yes, get some drink, and have a party. So, But he's a, he's a fun guy, good guy. On my flight home, um, I... Had had as good, it's good good flight, both of them seamless. But I was like, oh, did you know, do you know where I went? I went to Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, you love going out of the way. So I've been to Chicago now. <laughs> so let me go north. <laughs> cross that off why the you, list. Why are you, John Snow? Uh, <laughs> you love Game of Thrones references. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that good of a one because Chicago's not that much north. Okay, it's still north. If I went to Buffalo or something, that would be King of the North. north. Um, how do planes fly? Oh my god, here we go. How do they fly? Because when, okay, so we took, I was on American, so when Americans sometimes, when it's a less crowded flight, they'll do those American Eagle planes, which are They're old, tiny as shit. Very skinny. I hate them. They'll just have, I actually like them better. They'll just have two seats on each side. And the reason I like them better is weird, because I'm like, oh, it's not as heavy as their bigger ones. We might not fall. <laughs> you might not <laughs> We fall. might not fall from the sky, because it's not as heavy. So I, I like I like the smaller ones more, but like how does a that thing and when you look out the the window and the wings like kind of moving, it's like what why is it moving? Why shouldn't it be like completely stable? It's it's crazy how they can get those well, machines. They're, they're going way faster than it feels. So they're going it's, super it's, fast. It's velocity, science shit. So they're going super fast. Like when you see a plane in the sky, that I know shit's it's fucking going. flying. And it's and that's the reason it stays in the air because the wings are keeping it. It's speed. It's all speed. So if that's any, why they're, when you feel yourself on the runway, you're fucking going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it <laughs> you're takes going off. at speed in the air too. But how come we don't feel, feel like it? it? Science. Science. Okay. I can't explain that. That's something for Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, there's more people. Maybe uh, the Hart brothers. Right. Right. <laughs> Who the fuck are the height? The heart height. We're all day. <laughs> Sorry, the Hart brothers are from wrestling. Oh, the Hart Foundation. Yeah, I had a I had a plain story rant review on my story today because I had plain thoughts on my flight home today as well. Because I get anxiety on planes. I'm like, how the fuck are we up here? But at the same time, I'm like, Damn, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but like if you yes, when you when I look out the window, I'm like, we're fucking flying. It's insane. Um, forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I, I can't answer your question about how do planes fly because I wonder the same thing every time I get on that shit. Um, I, just know I, oh. I just know I couldn't be an astronaut because they go up way higher than an aircraft. And aircraft fuck me up. Space shuttle, I'm probably having a panic and anxiety attack and shitting my pants. All at the same time. Yeah, planes never crash. The big ones never crash. But still, when I'm on there and I feel that turbulence, I'm like, this could be it. Like, I can, every time we, we hit turbulence, I'm like, what if this thing just goes down? It's, uh, it's very scary, but. It is. Like, like people do it every day. It's shitty because, like, I anticipate a jolt of and I of the plane. Oh. Like, I'm, I'm like, tensing up waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hate that. You don't know when it's going to yeah, come. Yeah, because it's coming. I just don't know when, and I don't know how aggressive it will be. Because I've had I've had jolts where, like, the plane will, like, drop. Like, it's the Tower of fucking Terror. Oh, uh, yeah. And so I, bad. And I've had ones that, like, real, that shake, like, violently. I've had ones that, you know, tilt, like, while they're turning. And I'm like, what the fuck? This feels weird. So I just hate every kind of movement airplanes have. That's why I need a window seat. I need perspective. I need to know... I need a layout to know exactly what's happening. But it also matters what part of the plane you sit in. Like, middle to the back is the worst, I feel like. And towards the front is feels better. 
that's probably why pilots are so violent. They're in the front. Oh, they don't feel they any don't of that feel shit. shit. Like, well, that's like when shit. I when I feel turbulence and we're and it's crazy for a little bit. I want the pilot to come on and say, "Hey, sorry about that. We're just uh, experiencing a little turbulence. It should be over soon." But they don't. I'm like just just give me some peace of mind that this is uh, expected. Like this is normal. We're we're supposed to be going through this turbulent shit right now. Um, well, well, they tell you that we're, we might be... They do sometimes, but when we go through it and they don't warn you ahead of time, I want them to come on the radio and say... Even if they warn me, I'm not ready for it. Because Atlanta had severe weather, like tornado warnings, and the skies were fucking dark as shit. On your way back? Rain was pouring. And I was like, when we were ascending uh, to come back to Jacksonville, I was like, oh, this thing's going to shake. It's like, how do these clouds... like? We we call clouds like fluffy and pillowy, but when a plane, a plane when a plane goes through it, it's fucking violent. So I'm not with the cloud train anymore. Y'all not pillowy to me. Y'all violent. Do you put your phone on airplane mode when they tell you to? I get on Wi Fi. Okay. I what? mean they tell you to put it on airplane mode to use the Wi Fi, so I think that's so I do that. But like airplane mode don't do shit. It's not this, the movie Soul Plane. Where you like send a text and the plane goes down. I don't that know. happens. No, I don't know why they say put it on airplane mode. I don't know what the signal. I think is. because it might interact. In Whoa, I think it because it might interfere with the communication with air traffic control. <clears throat> Maybe don't know. I I don't know, but I haven't had a problem. I'm always on the Wi-Fi. But um, those were our two oh, nights. <laughs> I saw some. This is what I thought. I saw the Packers fans on my flight oh, back <laughs> from Cleveland. So they obviously were on, at the draft. And I texted you. I'm like, imagine being a Packers fan, buying your tickets to the draft. And on your way there, you see that Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay. So no matter what you do in the draft, won't matter at all. Because I think he's, I think he's gone. If Aaron Rodgers, he seems like a pretty hard-headed guy. If he wants out, I think he's going to get out. Um, so being a Packers fan and being there and just having to like pretend to enjoy the draft, knowing that you're about to lose Aaron Rodgers, he's 37. So, and he hasn't, you like your team hasn't put together a championship team in over a decade. So like, I'm sh- it's not going to get better than Aaron Rodgers though. So yeah. you got to be upset and you got to be disappointed. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, Jordan Love, but Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is Packers culture. And they're going to get, like, whoever gets Aaron Rodgers, the Packers are going to get, like, three first-round picks. Could it be more? Because it's Aaron Rodgers, but he's 37. Possibly. People are just talking about the Broncos, which would make sense because that's exactly what Peyton Manning did. I think he was a little yeah. younger. I was just I was going to say, though, like, Broncos, why wouldn't they have just taken a quarterback mm. with the pick they had? They had Justin Fields right there. Are you going to take Aaron Rodgers to be good now instead of, like, having a quarterback that can take you to the playoffs for years to come? That's a decision for the GM. But I would I would want a quarterback that is young and that's going to take me to the playoffs year after year after year, whereas Aaron Rodgers, he gets to the playoffs all the time. But he's aging. He's not going to be in the league that much longer. So you're looking at a Super Bowl right now. You want that instant gratification. That's the decision you have to make. Um, and that's really, like, really up to the GM. Like, what do you want? Do you want, you know, a quarterback you can build upon, or do you want someone you want to win right now? Um, but I didn't have any fans. I think it's probably because I left on a Monday, but there were, I saw an Indianapolis Colts fan, but that's about it. But um, the draft was on. Like, you guys have seen my 2021 goals list. The draft was on it. Before they even announced that there was going to be fans, I wrote, I want to go to the fucking draft. Jags have the first pick. It happened. We had the time of our fucking lives. I'm looking forward to going through this hour-long footage that we have so I can give y'all a vlog. I fucking love making vlogs. I've been doing this since college. I like going back and looking on my experiences because otherwise, all you have is the memory of it. Mm. If you have a video... Of your experiences, that's so much fucking better. And who knows how long this internet shit is gonna go on? But I probably will. If it's if it's out there, it's on the internet. You can go back anytime and remember your experiences. So um, if you can, whenever you go somewhere, document that shit. 
because oh, you will thank me later. And I don't regret taking my camera anywhere because vlogs are lit, and traveling is lit, and I have a good time. So, um, Dun and Drew also brought to you by our Patreon, patreon.com slash Dun and Drew. You get a bonus episode every week and exclusive ask. ask <sighs> Don Julio here. <laughs> exclusive access to our Discord channel. Andy, stay leaving. You setting up the camera? Uh-huh. Nice. Is she dead? Fuck it. You don't need it. Been going two hours anyway. <clears throat> um, You know, we got to get this segment in. Did Bubba <laughs> Wallace... <laughs> Did Bubba Wallace finish top ten? You guys know I didn't watch this race. When NASCAR season started, I was watching more. But now that I'm I'm in travel mode now. Summer's coming up. Fucking NFL season's coming up. I'm in travel mode. I'm not going to be home Sundays to watch NASCAR. But I followed 23XI Racing, so I know where he finishes. You think Bubba Wallace finished ten, top 10 this this uh, weekend in Kansas? I didn't even know Kansas, Kansas? had a racetrack. What are you Kansas? doing with a, with a racetrack in Kansas? That seems like it's kind of a straight... No, straight planes, maybe. Flat surface. Yeah, I'm going to go, yeah. I think he finally cracked top 10. Well, he didn't. He finished 25th. Fuck. Did he wreck? I don't know. No. I, didn't, I didn't look into it. I just saw uh, the post from the race team that he finished 25th. And I was like, no. Oh, let me put that in the document. So, um, Another L. While we were at the club table on... Friday night, mm. they showed the Spurs game highlights. We gave up a 32 point lead, and Jason Tatum scored 60 on us. I'm done with the Spurs. That's insane. I'm done with the Spurs. That is crazy. 32 points is crazy. We gave up a 32 point lead. Do you know when the 32 point lead happened? First half. Yeah. 60 points to Jason Tatum? Jason Tatum, Tatum scored 60. And let me drop this little tidbit. There's a girl I was crushing on who's a Celtics fan. This was like a couple years ago. I'm a Spurs fan. She's a Celtics fan. I was crushing on her hard. Andy can tell you. Mm. I was like, damn, I, I love this girl. I'm in love with this girl. I can't wait to see her again. Blah, blah, blah. All this shit. And we had, I remember texting her one time that I was like, hey, I want to go to a Celtics Spurs game with you in Boston. And she was at this specific game. This is not the game I wanted to go to. I just said I wanted to go to a Spurs Celtics game in Boston. This game was in Boston. She was at this game with her current boyfriend, who I recently met, who's a fan. Go figure. <laughs> the fucking girl I was crushing on is dating a guy that fucking knows me. God damn it. But I'm not into her anymore. Come on, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were at this game together, and they witnessed the Celtics fucking coming back from 32 points live against the Spurs. So I just thought it was funny how that happened. I feel like she chose that game on purpose. <laughs> I put it in her head. She don't know what the outcome would have been, though. <laughs> she don't, but shit. Speaking um, of the NBA, um, the Lakers are 1-6 and six since Vivian went missing. <laughs> no catfish? Yeah. <laughs> so... And LeBron is also is also mad at that rule he invented. Well, he didn't invent it, but that uh, the playing the playing game. game? Yeah, he's pissed, yeah. even though he like like he put it on. Did he? He wanted. He called for it. Did he? That's what the tweet said. Oh. <laughs> it said LeBron. It showed, it showed two screenshots. One was a news article saying a quote from LeBron saying we should have a playing game, and the next is a recent quote from LeBron saying. Playing games are dumb. So, well, that's, if that's if that's true, I need LeBron to be more consistent. Well, duh. On his takes, because like what everyone the, does. Do you? Well, he's serious about them, so he has to be better than that, especially with the kind of profile he has. But I think LeBron is just being a little bitch right now because the Lakers are sliding in the standings because they've had these injuries, and he doesn't have the bench. To keep them in the top three seed in the West. 
and he's salty now because he may have to play in the playing game. He may not have to. So I don't even know why he's bitching because there's still like seven games left where you can succeed. You don't have to play in the playing game. Get to succeed. Set the bar, LeBron. Why are you bitching about? He bitched about the All Star game. Played in it. So I don't. I don't get why he's verbal about this. Get to succeed. Bitch about it when you're in the play-in game and you lose. Bitch about it then. Don't bitch about it now. You might not even be in it, you dumb motherfucker. Damn, LeBron. They're you're, seven. They're seven seed. You were wearing his jersey there at night. Yeah. That was Cleveland LeBron, though. I like it better. Cleveland LeBron saw the championship trophy, saw the championship ring. They're all displayed there right in front of the stadium. We could, you know, 2016 NBA Finals, best finals in the past decade. Mm-hmm. So I uh, enjoyed that. But uh, just not into the NBA, guys. Y'all know this. <laughs> I don't care. Like, if I had to pick a team that I would want to see win the finals, it would be the Suns right now. I want the Suns to win the finals because of Chris Paul. I know there's plenty of NBA players that haven't won a ring that deserve it, but Chris Paul, he needs it. But we'll see. Um, the season, regular season ends this month while we're on the retreat, I think, is the last, like, games. Good. So playoffs will start after the Dun & Drew Retreat 3.0. I still don't know what to call it. Dun & Drew Retreat 3, Dun & Drew Retreat 3.0, third annual Dun & Drew Retreat. Working on names. But, Wow. It's a busy month. It's a busy month, travel-wise. This is my first, our first week, actually, in this apartment, new apartment, without any distractions. This will be my first week here. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. But I had a great time in Cleveland. Glad this motherfucker came. I'm going to try to convince him to come on more trips, because sometimes he's like, no, really quick. He's like, no, like, instantly. Chill. Think about it. I know, I know my life. I know what I can time. do. What do you mean? I know what I can do. Um, all right, watch our vlog, youtube.com slash Dun and Drew. Subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Dun and Drew. Uh, today was my first day at work. It was awesome. Was it? Yep. It was. Tell Great the, vibes. Tell the Patreon. Great vibes. Yeah, that, that, that's more of a Patreon convo. Um, what else we got to talk about? NBA, NFL, covered the draft. Oh, uh, season. A discount on merch. Uh, the NFL schedule is going to be released May 12th. May 12th. We'll I'm be thinking we'll do a live stream. What? Live stream. We'll do a live stream reacting to on May 12th. when it gets released. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Uh, I'll, pull, I'll pull out my calendar. Week one. Week two. <sighs> booking this flight. <laughs> Andy can decide if he's coming with me. Because there was there were uh, Jags fans at the uh, Cleveland parties we went to that live in Seattle, so we'll find. What How party. am I gonna get back from well, from Seattle again in time for work Monday? Take Monday off? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, take that much. We don't know what day it'll be, so maybe you'll have a enough in with them already to be able to call off. I'm hoping the Seattle games later in the year, though. That's the thing I'm looking forward to most is Seattle. The just the dates of when these games will be. I do have some, let's see, predictions. I think Jets-Jags will be Thursday night. Um, Seahawks will obviously be... Whoa. We're doing a whole prediction video for this. Yeah, no, it's just my initial thoughts. Um, I don't want week one to be a road game. Yeah, it's always good to be home for the excitement. I don't want to start my season going to another city. So you're going to every away game? I don't want to go to Houston. The away games last year were so much better. Can you just relax? I have to go to away games. Why? It's my bucket list. To go places that you haven't been, right? So if it's somewhere that you've been, you don't have to go. I haven't been to the cities. You've been to Tennessee. You've been to Indy. And he's nice, though. You've been to Cleveland. You've been to we Buffalo. We don't play Cleveland. We don't play Buffalo. We yeah, play we do. home. Oh. Whatever. Seattle. Whatever. L.A. New stadium. I'm going. You've been to L.A. New stadium. Oh, Can God. I see it? No. Don't worry SoFi about it. SoFi Stadium. It's just a stadium. Bro. No. Andy. Andy don't remember the 2019 season. I fucking went everywhere. 
We got Bengals on the road going back to Cincy. See my girl. And, girl. Andy just don't want me to leave. <laughs> like, I'm going to be lonely. It's a weekend. Go to the pool or come. I'll pay for your dick. <laughs> Cap. Nope, it's not. Anything else we need to talk about? Got credit cards. I'll blow, I'll blow through them credit cards to travel. No, you just paid them off. You don't want to do I'm that. I'm not going to max them out. I find the cheapest fare, cheap hotel. Not cheap, but like... If you... The, the best best way to do this away game shit, fly in Saturday, duh. Go out Saturday night, game Sunday. Fly out either Sunday after the game. Good Lord, that's barely any time there. Why not get in Friday? Can, if you can, because you save money. Because sometimes Friday is a more expensive flight. Uh, so if you can get in Saturday early, check in your hotel, go out that night, then go to the game the next morning. And if you can find a cheap flight after your game... It's risky, <laughs> but I did, I did that for the Bengals and the Colts. I didn't stay the night during the game. I left after the game. God. But the flights were... That would kill me. Flights were cheap. That's the best way to do it. You get in, you get the fuck out. You don't got to stay all weekend in the city. So you guys do your research. You can make it happen, guys. All right. Not everyone can, but if you are unemployed, you can. You can. Unemployed. You got a lot. Of, I'm saying you like, got a lot of advantages over other people. Well, I'm saying if they wanted to, I'm not. I'm not telling everybody to go out to their fucking favorite team's road games. Okay, but if you want to, you can find some cheap fares. All right, close us out. I gotta edit. Fall asleep. That's our show. Thanks for watching, listening. Share our show with your friends, parents, enemies. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Watch us on YouTube.com slash Dun and Drew. Subscribe to our Patreon.com slash Dun and Drew. 16% off the merch store. TheLoyalist.com slash Dun and Drew. Get 20% off and free shipping on Manscaped.com with the code Dun and Drew. Everything's fucking Dun and Drew. New intro coming. We have a vlog dropping. When? I don't want to give a date. You're afraid you're not going to finish. I'll finish it. I just don't know when. It'll be before Thursday. Um, it won't be tomorrow. You guys. Gonna so it's Wednesday. You, you guys will get this podcast first. You get this verbal vlog description of our trip. I hope it sounds good enough in text for you to watch the vlog because the vlog full full of energy. You ain't going to want to miss that. So um, take care, guys. Uh, leave some comments. Until next time, this has been... Down to Drew, baby.